What's up, everyone? It is the second episode. We need to come up with a cooler name because I, I have many ideas, but it's the second episode in our new podcast, really deep, deep diving into outbound and how to make outbound much more successful for you so that you reach out to less people and frankly, make more money. So I'll turn this over to our co-host, Justine, to lead us off on today's topic. Justine, what are we talking about today? Yeah. So last week we talked about how important data is in mm -hmm. creating more custom messages and um, helping with your outbound campaigns. So this week, I thought we would share our secrets about what we actually look for when we mine data and what questions we kind of ask and find the answers to. So Larissa, what's like the main overarching question that we're trying to answer when we're looking for data? Well, ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the right person. So what that means is like the right company for you, as well as the right person at that company, in addition to like it needs to be a good time for them. So you need to have some type of data indicators to let you know that like they're ready for you. So really right person, right place, right time. <laughs> that kind of breaks into three nice little sections then. So I think we can talk about each section and what we look for specifically in each section. So Nico, do you wanna start off with what we look for when we're trying to find the right person? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a question that we talk a lot about and finding the right person is often a little harder than most people think. They say, hey, listen, we're going to go after C-level executives, which is good. Uh, and then you try to reach out to the CEO of Coke or Apple and it's like, yeah, they're not going to take your email or LinkedIn message, right? So it's really figuring out who at the company has both the decision-making power and the need to solve this problem. And a great way to do it is actually look at job descriptions. That's one thing that we do in our competitor analysis quite a bit is actually look at what is it that a employee of an organization is being measured to. So for instance, if you do video services, video editing services, or you have something around that, find someone at the company, which could be the VP of marketing or CMO or director of marketing that's in charge of increasing on-page viewership or increasing number of subscribers or view time on YouTube or something like that, where you can directly say, this person is responsible for that thing in this service could help with achieving their goals because frankly they're being measured on those as much as the agency that they want to hire so right person is purely who at the organization has the decision making power as well as the need to solve this problem and when we say decision making power to just add a little bit of clarity there it's not just like they have the power to sign, like they have the power of the purse as well. So they can pay, like they're the ones who can make sure you get paid as well as they have the authority to make that decision without having to go to a higher level and get like approval. Um, that's usually like when we classify somebody as a decision maker, as somebody who can with autonomy make those types of decisions. Correct, no interns. <laughs> <laughs> no interns, got it. <laughs> so then the next section we kind of look at is the right time. Can we kind of delve on that and describe that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, the right time is often a very subjective variable, right? Because what person does not want to grow their business at any point in their business's life cycle, right? Like, but when you're coming into timing, you're looking for when is it the most painful that that problem is inflicting on a specific person or company. So for instance, if you are a company that is a direct-to-consumer brand, right, and all your money comes in through your website or social media, you know, people buying things on Instagram or something like that. And you are seeing that month after month, you're getting less, like 5% less engagement in online you know, traffic to your website or your social platforms. That might be painful enough. Let's say, let's, let's say that it's been three months, right? It's gone down 5% each month for the last three months, right? That's painful because that's going to affect the bottom line of the company, the profits. So that person is probably much more likely at this point to hire someone to help solve that problem or be in the market to want to solve that problem 
rather than, oh, maybe we had a bad November, but we had the best December that we've ever had in this you know, direct to consumer example. What specific things can you look for to help you figure out if it's the right time for them? Like, is there anything just out there on the internet that you yeah. can look at or? Go to like www.google.com and type it, <laughs> is it, when is the right time? No, no, no but seriously, like it, it really just depends on your solution, right? So if you're an agency and you're doing web dev, it's probably not a good time to reach out to someone to sell them a redesign of a website if they just paid a lot of money like a month ago to get a new website, right? That's a horrible time to reach out. But if you go to their website and you notice that half the buttons don't work, the, the, at the bottom it says like you know, copyright 2005, that might be a better time. So there's no overarching variable. It really, really depends on the, the agency's solution, right? And figure out like, when is that? You basically want to figure out like on a graph, right? right? So if you can't see me, I'm drawing a graph. Like when is it like the most painful, right? Time and most necessary time to do it, right? Because like if it's super painful, but it's not necessary to solve it at the moment, like eh, it's, not, it's not a good variable to measure it. And doing a lot of competitor analysis and customer interviews, it's, I know it sounds super boring. Like I spent four weeks last quarter just doing that. Like doing a deep dive into competitor research and interviewing agencies to see like when is the most painful and when do you want to hire a firm like ours. So there's no simple solution. I wish there was. Uh, actually, I don't because then we would be out of the job. But yeah, that's a lot of that and experimenting. Yeah, so kind of what Nico's saying is really like once you get your data lists, you need to enrich it with these other data points. So that means like once you find the right person at the right company, then you need to figure out if it's the right time for them. So that means oftentimes going through one by one and, you know, I'll just piggyback on the website example, going and looking at their each website and saying, okay, how does this one look? Does it feel like they need my services? Yes or no. If yes, great, continue. If no, take them off your list. You know, like it really is ultimately like about that data enrichment. So you usually when you pull a list, you'll get like a lot of surface level data. We call that kind of like tier one data. That's who the person is, what their name is, their contact info, all that kind of stuff. Then what we're talking about here is really more enriched data. So that would be more like tier two type data. It requires some actual thought to go in and it usually requires like a manual step to enrich that data. So then that leads us into our third topic, which is right place. Can you kind of explain that more? Um, yeah, right place. It's usually the medium that is a best place to connect with someone, right? So a great example is like if they only, if they're on Twitter 24, seven hours a day and you saw that they're liking things from a minute ago and they tweeted six times today, you should probably DM them on Twitter rather than send them an email in this case scenario, right? So it really like right place is where can I get into someone's circle of influence as soon or that's, that's most comfortable for them, right? So sometimes it's email, sometimes it's LinkedIn. We're exploring Discord, right? I'm doing a lot of competitor analysis this weekend on Discord because I'm seeing that there are people that really have marketing issues there that we can help solve. So like, why not go to where they are, right? It's not being romantic that I wish they were on email or LinkedIn. It's just going where they are. So it's always, you know, and this also goes to like the right place. It can shift, right? It can move and shift. And last, last time we talked about, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting that other social platform. Uh, you, you remember last episode we were talking Clubhouse. about that? Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it was Clubhouse six months ago. Now it's Instagram. So right place is where can I reach out to them? I have the most likelihood of getting into their sphere of influence. Yeah, we really talk a lot uh, internally about meeting people where they're at. So that's like, if, if I am on Instagram all day, every day, then reaching out to me on Instagram is a much better bet than reaching out to me on Twitter, which I haven't even opened the app in like seven years. So like, it, it really is partially about figuring out where the right place to reach out to them is. And it also largely is like, as you're enriching your own data to get those signals about whether or not somebody is in a place to buy, then you want to figure out like, 
okay, where are they? Where are they spending time? Maybe even what resources they use. So if you can see like that they have this certain tech stack, like that does give you more signals about who they are, what position their business is in and whether or not they're ready for you as you know, outside agency or contractor or whatever. And those are the things you need to be looking for as you're doing your data scraping. Yeah. And the one thing I'll add here is it doesn't really stop at the right place, right? We have a prospect that I'm trying to close and they tweet a lot. So in my follow-up messages to them to say, hey, you know, contracts out, what were you guys thinking? What resources can I send? I actually reference back a tweet or two that I've seen recently just to keep, you know, because I know they care about that platform. So a like and engage and all these small things can really go a long way in conveying that, hey, I'm, I'm here too. I'm just like you. Yeah, that is a great example of like using data and signals on like various places on the internet to stay top of mind. And that's another really big thing with this data is like once you get it, then what, you know? Yeah. So the next step is always going to be like staying top of mind, getting in their sphere and staying there. Sphere is the kind of the, the word of the day. I'm, I'm hearing you yeah, start using those, right? <laughs> Are there any other secrets that you guys have or like things that you do every time you look for data or specific things you look for that we didn't talk about yet? Probably. I don't know. All I, <laughs> all I do is, is data like processes and systems. I don't know, Larissa, is there something that you've seen I do that you're like, that's really cool or that's different? You're in our new um, chat, so you, you see everything I'm doing. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, to be honest, it varies significantly depending yeah. on what the project is. So like for us internally, what we look for is really different than like, you know, I'll just piggyback off some of the examples we've used before. Like it, it's really different for us as a lead gen agency than it would be for a web dev agency or for a video marketing agency or for a software development agency or anybody really like looking to get work in this way, it depends so much because everybody serves a different niche. That niche is going to be different in all of these areas. Your first tier, second tier, third tier, like everything is going to be completely different. So that's where it really does get complicated. I would say a couple like really common, uh, more like enriched data type things would be to look at like, I mean, I don't know, it, it's hard to say exactly what tier it would go in, but to look at like when they received funding, if they you know, had a series A or a series B, or uh, are they hiring for a particular position that might indicate to you that they have a need in this area? Uh, and maybe you're cheaper than it would be to hire a W-2 employee. I mean, that's something a lot of employers consider as they're going through because it's not inexpensive to employ people. I mean, you got like all your social security taxes, you got all your benefits, you have all these other expenses associated with hiring people that sometimes it is cheaper to just pay whatever that monthly rate is to a contractor because you don't owe them any benefits. You don't owe them any of that kind of stuff. So those are other things that are more common to look for as you're scraping data. And so I don't I'll, know. I'll, I'm sure I missed some, Nico. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make it a point and not bringing up the same things we did last in the last episodes, right? So hiring, yeah, I, I don't really care about those that much anymore but i'll tell you what one thing i did do this week so this week i was looking at a, a software development agency right and they work with sap oracle some of these big big players right you can use technology and enrich data to see what you know who uses what right and one of the things that they were looking for is a business problem right so you know one of the solutions that they have is salesforce which is which is a, a CRM based platform. And we're looking for how, you know, year after year for the last three years, how many new salespeople that they were adding. And if there has been any massive changes, right, to their, their stack. And there's ways of, of seeing it. it's kind of our secret sauce. And I'm like, hey, your CRM hasn't changed at all in three years, yet you've added 50% more. And I think they had 100 you know, salespeople. Now they're at like 150, almost 200. Right. And I was like, but your CRM hasn't really changed that much. So has the world, Justine, let me ask you a question. Has the world changed in two and a half, three years? 
maybe yep. in the last two and a half three years <laughs> possibly right possibly so that was a that was an interesting prospect where i'm like hmm they've gotten or they've gained a lot their crm hasn't really changed so unless it's worth working swimmingly they might be an interesting prospect for us there so it's kind of looking at not just yeah, and, and again, hiring is a good one. You know, expanding this one's kind of hiring, but it, it's taking a different viewpoint on on the data, right? So I don't know if there's a secret in that. I mean, I'm using yeah. What what you're talking about, Nico, of. is aggregating data for prospects essentially to make your own decisions based on effectively what it, what is their data or the data that represents them as a company. So I feel like there's a lot of jargon in that. Essentially what it means is like you looking for patterns in other companies that they might not even be looking for themselves and it's using those patterns. patterns. Yeah. Using those patterns to figure out is now a good time for me. Yeah. That's actually hmm. really so good. Might, yeah. Sorry. They might not even know that like they need you. Like you kind of have to be there to tell them, Hey, you, <laughs> you need us. <laughs> kind of yeah. like the best case scenario is you don't. And they just have this and you identify what that pattern is in in the form of like a business problem right mm -hmm. so you can figure out what the business problem is and you're like hey you're losing money or you're not making as much money as you can and you frame it that that way and then you have a solution right based on kind of the pattern that you match then it, it makes sense like oh yeah I, I know we've been struggling with acquiring new users but i didn't know it's because our crm might have been outdated and people don't know how to use it so yeah. Gotcha. So like I said, that varies so much for every single company though. So like what we do is not going to be the same as what we would even do for any one of our clients. Like the signals you look for, the patterns you look for, and the enrichment of the data that you make a point to collect, it, it varies so much for each individual industry, niche, everything. True. But still answering those like main topics of right person, right time, right place, regardless of what company you're in. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. for sure. Gotcha. Well, thank you guys. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Um, those were all my questions, so. <laughs> or in words of wisdom. Yeah. No, I, it's, it's really, you know, and, and again, it's, it's really around just making sure that when you think about creating a list that it's, and hopefully we're making it easier with our philosophies and, and specific tips and tricks, but it's all about like, don't take that lead at face value, do more digging, find more patterns that you can match, ask more questions. And you'll be surprised with a little bit of effort, how much better the prospects are that you're reaching out to. So that's all I got. Keep it short and simple, right, Larissa? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the only other thing I was going to say is like, don't forget about all of your other marketing while you do this. So, <laughs> Good one, right? you know, for example, like we had somebody literally yesterday say, hey, I really like your content. Would you be open for like some consulting type role, which is awesome for us, but it really is because our other marketing areas and our other sales areas greatly influenced, you know, the people we reached out to. Yeah. And those are the people that are seeing our content. Those are the people not only that we're getting in their sphere, if we're continuing on that word, but they're getting in ours and they're seeing our stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. No silver bullet, right? It's never one thing. It's, it's, a, it's a combination thing. So we're going to end it here. Um, if you struggle with reaching hard to reach out to, and that's, I hate how I say that, right? And this is, this is part of our show, right? We're not going to edit this out. This is a real thing. But if you struggle with reaching out to businesses and you want any advice on who the right person is, when's the right time, and what's the best medium to do that? Let us at Boundless know. You can let me personally know. And Nico at getboundlessmedia.com. We have over 110 blogs right now. If you want to learn lead generation yourself, hundreds of hours of content around it. Two podcasts so far around lead gen. Yeah, right. Or if you're an agency, you're just looking at to looking to reach more uh, of your perfect ideal clients and get them on calls, send fewer messages. Let us know. We are here to help you, but we're going to end it here. Thank you so much for the second uh, podcast. 
guys. Like this is this has been awesome. And audience out there, if you guys have any questions, concerns, you don't like how I messed something up, uh, let us know. We are here to make your listening experience a little bit better. But have a great day and talk soon. Bye.